Hey everyone, a semi-automatic blowback Nerf pistol blaster would be pretty much a dream. And that's what this MX-6 blaster tried to achieve. I'm your host Dave, welcome to Tag. From the start, I'll tell you that this blaster was provided by M416 gelblaster.com, but as my opinion are my own, my review will remain the same. The box was a little roughed up so I had to open it right away to ensure that everything was inside and in working order. So let's not lose any more time and go on the table to check this NK MX-6 blaster. So this is the MX-6 blaster in question. Yes, it's a Chinese semi-automatic uh, blowback pistol blaster with a hint of a halo flavor with the UNSC remember reach I mean this thing screams halo and at the same time it screams gecko clone this is basically a semi-automatic gecko but uh, the inspiration for halo didn't stop there because this grip is humongous this is basically scaled for master chief out there but let's go back to the blaster and go with what we had in that box. In that box we had the blaster itself with its magazine, the small 11.1 volt LiPo, the charger, some allen key and screws to take care of the blaster, a pair of cheap safety goggles which I'll never use, and 20 of those uh, Chinese bamboo dart. Again, I will try them but any jam might occur because they don't even have the right shape on them and I would not like to use those in a blaster of that price because this thing got a hefty price this is a hundred and forty United States dollar I'll let that sink in for a bit because this thing is barely bigger than my Viper it's a hundred and thirty nine United States dollar 195 Canadian on the website I'm gonna leave the link in the description so you can go check it out. But this is the blaster in question. Let's look at First thing first, I have to say this is a heavy blaster. This is really a big boy. And this grip is not completely horrid, but really not comfortable. But I'm surprised that the trigger reach is not so so far from my finger maybe the shape change it but yeah i can easily reach the trigger even with the humongous grip on this thing because this is huge it's kind of neat uh one thing here this is the lipo compartment i have to say this thing is tight i had to try it and i had very very big trouble fitting it in as a matter of fact, I have no way of fitting the battery inside without the wire poking out of the blaster. So that's how we're going to test it today. Because this LiPo is very nifty, very small, but the compartment to put it is even smaller. That aside, I already charged the battery to be sure we could use the blaster. I didn't want to run out of battery while trying it. M416 Gel Blaster also sent me two extra mag, a short one, which worked perfectly, and a long one. And as you can see, it is not in the right shape. I am not gonna hold them responsible because this magazine was stuffed in the box uh, on the side, and the box was really, really roughed up, so I guess it was damaged and shipping, but this long mag is completely useless. Uh, I tried to install it, I tried to refit the follower, it keeps popping up and it jams into the blaster. But four door short magazine, they work rather well. So that's basically the best way I found of installing the battery right now. There is no more space into that thing and it's not flapping anymore. Let's remove the magazine. Let's insert one. And let's see how it fire it chambers right away and uh, and 
and it stays open on empty. Uh, this release, I have to say, I try to pivot it down. I snap my finger two, three times here. This is too close. You're going to hurt yourself and this hurts bad because the return spring on that thing is powerful. The best way of re-chambering a magazine that I found, insert it in and don't touch this. Otherwise, you're going to snap your finger, you pull the rear and let it go. And this thing works. And then it stays open again. So far, I had been lucky. I had no jam during the small preliminary testing was three mags just to be sure it's working i didn't have jam even now you just saw it so now we're gonna go on the chronograph and then on the target to try this thing because i really want to know what this thing can do in real life but first let me try that thing Yeah, those are 10 dart magazine. I put only nine, like in most of my pistol, it compresses the dart a little less and smooth, smooth operation. This thing shot. Let's shoot another nine dart through it. And then we're gonna check the result. That was quite fast. So the average is 114.8, the minimum is 107.2, and the maximum 122.3, with uh, most of the shot around 114, 115. This thing is quite regular, and so far, so good, no jams on it. Well, in the end, this NK MK6. Well, it's far from being perfect. First thing I gotta say, I don't know if it's only my version, my copy, or if it's a problem due to the manufacturer, but there is a few gaps that are not there, quite there. I had to change a few screw on it. Those are two different, and this thing is not aligned properly. There is a few scratch on it. It's like this is a used slash refurbished model. Nonetheless, it worked. It worked pretty flawlessly. I didn't have any jam. Second, I'll go for the magazine. The magazine are, well, a bit cheap. I didn't have the experience of the long magazine because it broke during shipping. I assume and I wasn't able to fix it to properly use it and it was barely fitting the mag well. Those magazines, the short one, are good for this blaster. I mean they are supposed to be 10, I put 9 like I do in all my 10 round pistol blaster. It do put a little less stress on the dart. Those magazines fit really tight. You can't you can drop it. Okay, this thing will hold in, but it will hold in and not move, which is gonna give you this uh, reliability with the blaster uh, this action is not super snappy i had not a jam but like a double almost double indexing it was halfway with the dart it went back because i was spamming the trigger you need to let, give it some time so it comes back with the return spring i am sure with a little tuning and a little finicking with this thing it will be like almost perfect but for now, it is too much of a prototype. Speaking of too much of a prototype, this grip. It's basically the shape of the magazine with some rubber on it. It is far from being comfortable as it is far from being the right size. This is for huge, gigantic hand. But I have to say, the trigger pull is pretty comfortable. The trigger is like right at the right place and you have all the enough space on it. So you can 
pull on it easily and have some good ergonomic even if that grip is horrid. Then the last thing I might not like about this thing is the size of the battery. Because the battery is still a very small, very good size, but not very powerful for amps. But this battery cover is too small. I might even carve a little space into the Picatinny so the wire could go easily inside. But for now it is... Uh, that's a problem. I mean, now it's there, it's not shaking, but this battery cover, I'm not sure. Maybe a little longer to go a little further, or a little wider, or both? and maybe a screw to fix it in place would have been better. Enough complaining about this thing. I understand this is a very pricey blaster and the weight of it will tell you the price of it. I'm, t I'm telling you this thing will be full of metal internal. Just the weight of it. And I assume the motor is somewhere here because the plunger tube system works exactly like a Lizzie slash fire wrap, viper, gecko, name it. It's the reverse plunger tube, so I guess all the gearing is in the back because when you're shooting, this thing operates. I just hit an empty bottle on my table and it's operating. This thing is responsive. The lack of ergonomic is make it not really a, a good secondary. If you run it as a primary pistol, I would say yeah, maybe, but it is limited to 115 FPS which is still good considering the size of this thing. The accuracy was quite good on the fire test, plus in general I don't really have complaint except that the dart don't fly that fast, but I'm pretty sure I can easily upgrade it because there's no real pop when you fire, you mostly hear the gear. So I'm sure a slightly tougher spring with a slightly better seal because when I block the barrel without the battery when it's engaged, I can still fire it and when the seal releasing, I got air coming out of there, meaning the rear of the plunger tube is leaking air. And I got some leak coming from up there, which might be either the O-ring of the pusher or the O-ring on the plunger tube at the bottom. We can see the metal plunger tube at the bottom. This looks like a decent size, but a standard gecko size, so I'm pretty sure I can find my way around this blaster. Now for the big question, would I recommend this blaster? I would say if you are really into AEB, AEG Blaster, you might want to check it out. You might want to take a look at it. I have this feeling that inside is some standard metal gel ball gear, which could be probably upgraded. And the whole configuration make me think this is all standard Chinese uh, configuration inside of there for the front, like a lazy like configuration. And I will be able to do something with it. In the end, it's a blaster that you really need to have if you are to order this thing. This is kind of pricey and the end result is a bit prototypey. That said, so far, I had no jam. It was working. So for me, this is not a recommendation per se, but this is not a bad blaster. Well, I think that's it for this video. In the meantime, you can always follow me on Facebook and Instagram at that old nerd guy. Please leave a like and comment, subscribe for more content, don't forget to hit that bell to notify for my latest video. This was Dave Fatag, thank you for watching, see you next time, bye.